Okay, question four then is um, starting off with some graph transformations. So we've got 4a. Now we'll just touch very quickly on a little bit of theory. So if you've got a transformation, if you've got two transformations, one in y, one in x, then the order does not matter. One in y direction, one in the x direction, then the order is not important. Okay, so it doesn't matter if you do one and then the other because if you think about it, you're moving one in one direction in the y direction up and down and moving one in the x direction along. So the order doesn't matter. Now I'm just going to sort of tell you these next two things and if you want to spend a little bit more time um, actually researching this and going back to your notes, then it's worth doing if you don't want to just remember these rules. Okay, so if you've got two in the x direction, then it's the translation in the x direction happens first, followed by the stretch. And if you've got two transformations in the y direction, then it's the stretches first, followed by the translations. And for the purposes of this, remember that we would, in, we would call a reflection a stretch, because it is just a stretch scale factor minus one. So that's the kind of theory, if you like, that I'm using um, in this question. But if you want to spend a little bit more time on it, then it's worth going back to um, your notes and through the lessons to try and work out why that order happens. So what we're looking at here is y to the uh, y equals e to the x has been transformed to y equals e 2x minus 5. So looking at each one in turn, firstly, because it's two in the y, in the x direction, we are going to do the translation first, then the stretch. So just for simplicity of these notes, we are going to do the translation first. So it is a translation, and we're going to use a vector to describe it. So it's happening in the x direction because it's happening inside the function. If it was e to the 2x minus 5, all minus 5, that would be in the y direction, but it's happening to the x, and it's happening in x, so it's the opposite to what we expect, so it is a translation 5, 0. We don't need to write in the x direction because that's implied by, the, um, by this. So that happens first, and then secondly, there is a stretch of a scale factor. Now the scale factor, because it's happening again in the x direction, it's the opposite to what we expect, so it's a scale factor of a half, and this time we must write in the x direction. Okay. Now if you actually look at the mark scheme for this question you'll see there's another way of doing this which starts with a stretch um, and then the translation is actually half as big because the graph has been um, stretched and therefore the translation is not quite so, so much. But for the purpose of this video I'm going to show you just this one method which will get you your four marks which is using our memory of what happens when you have two transformations in the same direction. And there we have our four marks for part A. Now on to part B then. The first thing I did for this question was I actually drew myself a sketch. Now you can use your graphical to look at what e to the 2x uh, minus 5 looks like, but I know it's some sort of graph of, um, of an exponential form, so it's going to look something like that. And then I decided to just roughly put on where I thought this point would be. So something like that. And we're looking for the normal to the curve at this point. So the first line I'm going to draw on is not the normal. This is the tangent. Okay. And I will label that as such. So that's the tangent. And the second line that I'm going to draw on is going to be the normal. So this red line here is my normal line. Should be a straight line. That is rubbish. So it should be a straight line, my normal line, which crosses at right angles there. So I've just given myself a bit of a picture of what I'm doing. So, sorry, that red line is my normal. So, I need to know the gradient of the tangent, because once I know the gradient of the tangent, I can work out the gradient of the normal, and we can go from there. So I need to take my function, differentiate it, to find my dy dx, which will give me my gradient. So y equals e to the 2x minus 5. 
So I want to find dy by dx. So I'm going to use the chain rule because it's a fun it's a composite function, function within a function. So it's y is e to the u and u equals 2x minus 5. Now if you've already remembered the rule of how to differentiate one of these, then that's absolutely fine. But this is going to just give us a little bit more um, stability in the question if we haven't remembered that. So e to the x or e to the u goes to e to the u. And du by dx in this case is going to be 2. So my gradient function dy by dx is equal to 2 e to the u but u is 2x minus 5. So what I'm then looking to do is um, to find the gradient at the point x is 2. So the gradient at this point here, what's that equal to? So I'm going to substitute 2 into this function. So I've got 2e to the 2 lots of 2 minus 5. So the gradient at this point is 2e to the 4 minus 5, which is equal to 2e to the minus 1. Okay, now that is just a number, but we're certainly not going to try and simplify that much further than perhaps saying it's 2 over e. Okay, so that's now the gradient of the tangent. So let's just put that using our colours again. So using blue, tangents, gradient. So to find the normal gradient, we take the negative reciprocal. So the normal gradient is going to be equal to minus e over 2, a half, minus a half of e. So that's the gradient of my normal. So then we're going to need to find the equation of the normal. So the equation of the normal, again, we'll keep our colors going, equation of the normal is y minus y1 equals mx minus x1. So we thought we're going to use this format for this one. So putting in what we what we know, we know this point, it's given in the question, so I'll just scroll up for a second to find the point. So it's this is this point is the point 2 e to the minus 1. And we know the gradient. So it's y minus e to the minus 1 equals minus e over 2 x minus 2. So that is my equation of the normal line. So from here, I'm going to need to go back to my question, probably give ourselves a bit more room as well. So let's firstly go back to the question. The normal at the curve intersects the x-axis and y-axis at two different points, point A and point B. So if I just extend this line a little bit further there so we can see where we've got these two points, we need to know, so it intersects the x-axis at point A. So this point here is point A and it intersects the y-axis at point B. So this point here is point B. And we're being asked to find or show that the area of this triangle, with this part being the origin, so the triangle, I'm going to just show in yellow, is going to be this line, this line, and this line. Sorry, I said I was going to use O and I put the word, put letter A in there. Um, so, That one goes to there and just changing that to an O. So we've got the triangle O to A to B. So we need to find these two points. So A is found. So A is found when Y equals zero and B is found when X equals zero. And that is when those two things happen for this equation of the normal. Solving this first one then when a a where is when y is equal to zero. So we're going to take our function and put it equal to zero. So zero minus e to the minus one equals minus e over two x minus two. So now we're looking to rearrange this to make x the subject. So zero, and we're just going to rewrite that as one over e equals minus e over two x minus 2. So that 0 is now going to go, so we're left with minus e over 
so, um, one minus one over e. So multiply through by two, minus two over e equals minus e x minus two. And then I'm going to divide by minus e. So dividing by minus e, this whole thing here, the minus is going to divide by the other minus, leaving a positive and e squared. Okay, so I've divided by that term there. That's going to leave me what x um, x minus 2 is equal to, or it's equal to x minus 2, and then finally add the 2 over. So I've got 2 over e squared plus 2 equals the x value at a. I'm then doing something similar using the same function again, but this time when x is equal to 0 to find the y coordinate of b. So y minus, and we'll just go straight to 1 over e there, is equal to minus e over 2 of 0 minus 2. So I've got y minus 1 over e equals, now the thing in the bracket is just going to simplify to minus 2. So I've got minus e over 2 times by minus 2. So y minus 1 over e. The minus and the minus, when they multiply together, are going to cancel. So I'm going to be left with 2e over 2. So we can then simplify the right-hand side. y minus 1 over e is equal to e. 2 and 2 cancel each other. And then I'm just going to bring the 1 over e over. So it's e plus 1 over e. So these are our two solutions which give me my x and my y values at those two key points on the graph. So I'm just going to remove the workings that we've just done here, scroll up with these two solutions, and we'll have a look at the graph to see where we go from there. Right, here we go then. So just um, taking what we've just worked out, which is the equation or the value of x at point A and the value of b at point, uh, sorry, yeah, the value of y at point B. So what we then need to just sort of realise is we're trying to find the area of a triangle. So the area of a triangle is half base times height. So the base of this triangle is just whatever the value of A is, and the height of this triangle is whatever the value of B is. So we are going to be doing a half multiplied by, firstly we'll go for the base, so that's the value of A. So 2 over x squared plus 2 and then that is multiplied by the value of the height which is e plus 1 over e. So what we're looking to do next is to rearrange this into the form that we've been given up here. So first thing that we are going to do is I'm going to try and find a common denominator for each of these two fractions, okay? Because I'm looking at this thinking I need this common denominator. So in doing this, it just means that we don't have to do any cross multiplying because you could multiply this out as a double bracket. That would be absolutely fine. But this method I'm going to use is going to be a little bit more algebraic at this point. So I've got two over e squared. So this is going to be plus two e squared or e to the 2 over e squared. So I've multiplied top and bottom of this one by e squared. So I haven't changed its value at all. That is going to be multiplied and I'm going to try and get this with a common denominator as well. So I'm going to end up with e squared on the top over e as I've multiplied top and bottom of this by e plus 1 over e. So the half still remains. So that all I'm trying to do here is get it into the format given in the question. So all I'm looking for is something over E. So at this point, I've now got my two common denominators. So I'm going to rewrite my fractions as 2 plus 2E two squared over E squared times E squared plus 1 over E. So that's my common denominator there getting involved. And all of that is multiplied by a half. Now, I've noticed that the numerator of my fraction, e squared plus 1, just at the top of the video nearly being cut off there, is there. And I've also noticed that 
looking at the numerator over here, I can actually get that to that e squared plus 1 if I factorise out the 2. So I'm going to rewrite this as 2 lots of 1 plus e squared times 1 plus e squared, just changing the order of that to match the question. And that is divided by e squared times by e. So we can now see that we've got a half times by 2 lots of 1 plus e squared squared, because there's two of them, this one and this one. And that is over e squared times e, which is e to the 3. So I'm very, very close to where I want to be. Just come back up to the question again. I'll remove all of the highlight so we can just see exactly what we're looking for. We wanted 1 plus e squared to the m over e to the n. So the only thing that we've got that we don't want is this 2 inside and this half outside. But that's fine because they cancel each other out. So that leaves me with the final solution of 1 plus um, e squared squared over e to the 3. So going back up to the question just for one final time, m is equal to 2 and n, the value on top of e, is equal to 3. So six marks there, very much an awful lot to do with, regard, with regards to the differentiation to find point A and point B and then a bit of algebraic manipulation at the end here to find M and N. As I stated earlier, this is not the only way to do this because once you've got to this stage here, you've got your double brackets, so you could expand those in that way, but I've gone for the trying to find the relevant um, denominators to then work this one through to find M and M in this, in this way.